Today we'll be reading The Junkyard Wonders by Patricia Puaco. Okay. It was the end of summer. The katydids were still buzzing. When I finally summoned up the courage to ask my dad if I could stay with him and grandma for the school year instead of going back to California to be with mom, like always. <coughs> Your mother would miss you, Trisha, but I will talk to her, dad said. I had a good reason for staying, a good reason. The Junkyard Wonders. To the wonder of Mrs. Peterson and my tribe. My heart sang as I walked to school with all of the kids on my grandma's block on the first day of school. My mother and father had decided that I could stay just for one year there with my father and grandma in Michigan. In my old school in California, the kids all knew that I had learned to read, <coughs> that I had just learned to read, that I used to be dumb. Everyone knew that I was always in special classes. Here, no one would know. No one would tease me. And I already had a new friend, Kay. But when I got to the front steps of the school, all of the neighborhood kids ran off to their classes. And when I saw Kay and waved to her, she didn't wave back. I just stood there not knowing where to go. And when I showed two strange girls my class card, they got funny looks on their faces. You're in Mrs. Peterson's class, they said, upstairs in room 206. Room 206, I found it. In the classroom, a gawky boy I'd never seen before yelled out, hey, the name's Tom. Not spelled T-O-M, but T-H-O-M. Sit here next to me. He had huge, dark-rimmed glasses that magnified his eyes. I think this is him. I sat down and looked around, and that's her, right? Everyone seemed really different in one way or another. I couldn't put my finger on it. Suddenly, everyone snapped to attention. Our teacher was standing in the doorway. Short and stout, she seemed a little scary, brusque, but her eyes, her eyes were friendly. I was sure of that. She walked up to the podium at the front of the room and slammed an enormous dictionary on top of it. Then she adjusted her glasses and without saying hello or how are you, she started reading in this no-nonsense voice. The definition of genius, she began. Genius is neither learned nor acquired. It is knowing without experience. It is risking without fear of failure. It is perception without touch. It is understanding without research. It is certainty without proof. It is ability without practice. It is invention without limitations. It is imagination without boundaries. It is creativity without constraints. It is extraordinary intelligence. Then she took a deep breath and slammed the book shut so hard it sounded like a gunshot. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the junkyard. I am your teacher, Mrs. Pe Peterson. <coughs> she started walking around the room looking at each of us. I want you all to write the definition on the blackboard. Post it on your mirrors. Look at it every day. Memorize it. The definition describes every one of you. She's calling them geniuses. That's not how Patricia feels, huh? At recess that day, I couldn't wait to ask Tom... Why is our class called the junkyard? Because we are, didn't you notice? All of us are different, you know, odd, like stuff in a junkyard. He turned toward the playground. See that super tall kid over there? That's Jody Beach. He's got some disease that makes him grow too fast. He's my bodyguard. No one picks on me when he's around. He smiled. Over there, that kid, that's Gibby McDonald. He has Tourette's. There's Stuart Bean. Now, I'm not sure which one is Gibby McDonald. I can't remember. We'll find out. That There's Stuart Bean. He has diabetes. Me? Well, I have trouble seeing. Right? That's Tom. They call me Sissy Boy because even so, I love ballet. It's my life. I take ballet too. At least I did in California. I knew there was something about you I liked, Tom said. I felt I had found a soulmate in Tom, and since he thought Jody was nifty, so did I. But it only helped a little. When I got home that night, I told Dad and Grandma about my day. I tried to be brave and not let them know how sad I really was. But just as Dad was tucking me in at bedtime, I finally burst into tears. 
Oh, Daddy, I've been put into a special class again. It's called the junkyard. Junkyard? What junkyard? My dad asked. That's what everybody calls our class. Darlin, my dad said, you are not a quitter. Stick it out for a month. If the class doesn't get better, I promise I'll send you back to California. I didn't tell him that when I tried to sit with Kay and her friends at lunch, she said that junkyard kids couldn't sit at their table. Wasn't Kay her friend? She was her friend, and then she said that to her. It's kind of awful, isn't it? The next day, Mrs. Peterson arrived in class with a basket full of small glass bottles. Today, she said, we are going to determine your tribes. She gave us each a vial. Tip some of the liquid on your wrist. Hmm, smell? Some of you smell like lemons, some cinnamon, some almonds. Now you can smell someone who has, Aww. now can you smell someone who has the same scent as you? They will be part of your tribe for the year. I sniffed my own wrist, vanilla. We all strolled around the classroom sniffing each other's wrists. I sniffed a boy's wrist who was wearing a homespun shirt and he sniffed mine. Vanilla, we both said. My name's Gilbert McDonald. That must be him, maybe? No, or is that that's, Tom? That's Tom. Let's see. My name's Gilbert McDonald. Call me Giddy. Then the two of us fanned out. I found a girl who smelled like vanilla. Looks like you are in my tribe, I chirped. She just smiled but didn't answer me. Gibby came over with Tom. Vanilla, he announced. My bodyguard Jody is too. So Tom, Gibby, Jody, and I were a tribe. I asked the shy girl her name. She wrote it down on a piece of paper. Ravan Sals. Tom told me later that she hadn't spoken as long as he had known her. You guys remember I had a student like that? I never heard his voice the whole year. Can you Why? back up a little bit? Why? Because um, it's called a selective mute. I mean, it, I'm not sure that that's what she has, but what does he, that mean? he could talk, but he was he didn't really kind of like so, had so much anxiety about talking in class that he didn't. Yeah. Remember my student I told you about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. From then on, whenever there was a project to be done, um, Mrs. Peterson had the tribes work together. Ravan never talked, but she was a whiz at math. Gibby had ties and shouted for no, Gibby had ticks and shouted for no reason sometimes. But his father was a professor of engineering and Gibby loved to build things. Boy, was he smart. Now you guys know what a tick is like that might be like you twitch your nose or you, you do something like shake your head or something like that. That's kind of like a movement that is kind of like strange, right? A you lot don't of know. people have ticks, tiny ticks, but like yeah, some of them true. are like yelling out loud for no reason. Yeah, that's different than a tick. A tick is kind of like a physical thing that you do again and again, right? Sometimes I shake my knee a lot. So maybe that's a tick Sometimes then, I'll huh? Do this. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a tick, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Jody loved reading everything, particularly poetry. He even wrote poems of his own. Tom made all of us laugh. He was so clever. Me, of course, I could draw, so I became the official journal keeper. The borders were filled with my drawings. It wasn't long before Tom, Jody, Gibby, Ravan, and I were best friends. We did almost everything together. Even after school, we visited Jody, who lived out on a farm east of town. His mother decorated cakes and she was working on the tallest wedding cake I had ever seen. We all helped her. So let's think about this. This is Tom. This is Jody. This is Patricia. This must be Gibby. And this is Ravan, right? I think. Wait, yeah. what does Sorry. Ravan have again? She doesn't talk, oh, right? Yeah. She doesn't talk. Okay, I'm gonna leave that there because it's confusing. If the per, if the if my if my students are kind of reading along, it's hard for them to see that reading and this reading. So that's why. Actually, I'm just gonna take this off. Okay, Delphine. There we go. Okay. One night, Gibby's dad set up a telescope in his back field and invited the whole class over to look. 
We could see Saturn with our naked eyes, but with the telescope, we could see Saturn's rings. We never did go to Ravan's house. She lived in a foster home, and I don't think she was too happy there. But her foster mother let her paint beautiful designs on silk from an old World War II parachute, which she brought to school to show us. My dad arranged for the whole class to go to a neighbor's farm and have a hayride that took us way off into the fields. Now, at first, when she joined this class, she was feeling really down about it, right? But now it's kind of funny because now, this sounds like the funnest class of all, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go check on that, okay? Winter, will you start reading right here, please? Here? Right here. Oh. Our class was special, all right. The junkyard kids were pretty amazing to begin with, and Mrs. Peterson showed us how to shine. She even helped us make badges and that said, The Junkyard Wonders. So you could be proud of who you are, she said. That day we got the badges. This mean boy came running to us. Weirdos, retards. Now you even wear dumbbell pins. A boy named Barton Poole grabbed the pin off my shirt. I started to cry, but then Tom and Gibby ran at Barton and his friends. Right, one of his friends said. Now twinkle toes and duh, 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 the jerk fool are going to hurt us. We are so scared. Just about then, Jody, big, wonderful Jody, appeared from nowhere. The mean boys sure backed off. Someday you aren't gonna have this freak to guard you, Barton snarled as he stalked away. Whoa, that's awful, isn't it? Yeah. You guys can have this as long as you can do it without talking, okay? Winter's gonna pass it out because it's very, very hot. Okay. And here's the stuff you need over here, guys, okay? There's some plates there for you. Okay, that day, thank you, Winter. That day, Mrs. Peterson could see that we were badly shaken. It sounds like some bullying was happening in a big way, huh, guys? <coughs> Gibby finally spoke up. Mrs. Peterson, he said, we're all junkyard kids, even though you try to make us feel better about it. We're throwaways, junk, and everyone knows it. Oh, my dear, that's where you are wrong, she said wistfully. Every one of you is my wonder, and don't you realize what a junkyard really is? Place for things that nobody wants, Jody answered. Oh, it is a... Quiet. Oh, it is a place full of wondrous possibilities. What some see as bent and broken throwaways are actually amazing things waiting to be made into something new. Something unexpected, something surprising. Are you guys still listening? Mm -hmm. Okay. We all looked puzzled. All right, class, get your coats. We are walking to the Melvin Beach Junkyard right now, she exclaimed. You're gonna go on over to the junkyard, aren't they, Delphine? At the junkyard, Mrs. Peterson stopped us. Now form into your tribes, then collect everything that you think could be made into something new. Remember, wonders, here's your chance. Forget what the object was. Imagine what it could be. Each of the tribes set off across the junkyard, collecting wheels, doors, handles, latches. We vanillas hadn't gotten junk, hadn't gotten just the right junk, though, until almost the end of our visit. As Jody, Ravan, Tom, and I were climbing over our last pile of assorted junk, Gibby called to us. He was standing under a shed roof looking up. There, hanging from the roof strut, was an old wrecked model airplane. Gib, that's just an old torn up plane, Tom said, turning to leave. No, Gibby said. It's a beauty. I see it. We are going to rebuild it into something bigger, better. Something wonderful, something that will defy gravity itself. This plane is going to fly all the way to the moon. There was such wonder in his eyes that we knew we just we had just what we needed. <laughs>